Say you're in a coding interview and you have the free choice to choose a new version of Python. Is using the language's modern conveniences cheating in a coding interview? Or does it miss the point of the problem? Well, let's dive into those nuances today as we go over LRU cache, a common leak code problem that has been totally changed by the introduction of ordered dictionaries in Python as the default replacement for traditional dictionaries. All right, so here we have the leak code problem in question, number 146, LRU cache. This was a leak code medium question, and this is actually a really good interview question because it's fairly simple in chunk by chunk pieces, yet it has so many components that the interview can test you on. One being just what is a cache in general? Another being, do you know how to use getters and putters? And more importantly, it tested you on combining two data structures, a hash map and a doubly linked list, which you would have to implement yourself in any coding language. Furthermore, in the past, a lot of interviewers frowned upon you importing ordered dictionary, as that's an outside library that made it a lot more convenient to do this problem. However, modern Python, which is actually not that modern, it uh, came out a few years ago, three years by this point, actually, Python decided to make dictionaries by default ordered. And what that allows you to do is you can use how an ordered dictionary import made this problem so much simpler, removing the need for a doubly linked list. Instead, you could just intelligently use a hash. But does that then defeat the point of the problem? And how would you solve the problem then? Well, if you want to solve it the traditional way, there's a ton of tutorials and explanations about how to use a hash map and a doubly linked list together, so I'm not going to dive into that. Instead, let's have a conversation on should you do this in an interview and what do you do if you are an interviewer who has an interviewee wanting to do this. In my opinion, because this is not an outside import and your interviewee has the knowledge of how Python dictionaries work innately, you should let them use this and you can just ask them leading questions to let them justify how they would have solved this otherwise, but they don't actually have to code it to me. And let's talk about why. Well, coding a linked list is pretty simple. You just have a node that has a current, a previous, and a backwards in the case of a doubly linked one, and you'd have to link them all together as objects. If you wanted to test them on that specifically, you can just ask them to code a doubly linked list on the side anyway. Instead, what this interview question now shows to me is that you have a candidate that knows how to work smarter, not harder. And in this case, they chose a language, Python 3.7+, that is smarter and dictionaries are ordered from the start for you. And likewise, they're taking advantage of that while solving this problem. The amount of code you need to solve it has been significantly reduced. The runtime is also good because Python's built-in ordered dictionary is a lot more efficient than solutions they could code themselves. Furthermore, if they have the tact to explain everything that I just said, then they're probably a decent communicator too, which is one of the underlying things that you're looking for as you get interviewed in a technical interview. Now, with that said, you could also ask them, is it always safe to assume that a Python dictionary is ordered? Because if you have any experience working with Pandas or NumPy or other plugins and especially web-based IDEs for like data science, a Python dictionary, even if 3.7 is selected, may not actually be ordered in those IDEs. So that is something to be super careful of because right now we're assuming that this works because we know that lead code will let us do it, but in some other platforms it may not. So they all have to ensure that say they were writing Python code in your product, that product will always stay at that version of Python or above. But again, if they have the knowledge to talk about all of these trade-offs, you already have a pretty strong candidate from the start. On the flip side, say that you wanted this as just really a technical challenge of combining two data structures specifically. Then one, Python probably shouldn't be an allowed language. Two, you might actually wanna ask the interviewer to both create their own hash map and create their own doubly linked list and then combine the two in this problem in a longer interview. I think showing that the candidate understands a hash map to the point of being able to recreate them on themselves and being able to create a doubly linked list themselves shows a lot more about combining two data structures than what you'll get out of just this problem alone. So with all of those moral caveats said, let's dive into how do we solve a LRU cache the modern way in Python using a dictionary that has already been ordered. Well, let's first read the problem description together. Now we're going to design a data structure that follows the constraints of the least recently used cache for this problem. First, we're going to implement this class, which is already scaffolded for us on the right side. We're going to initialize an LRU cache with a positive size capacity. We're going to have it get the value of the key if the key exists, otherwise we're going to return one. So that already is our hint that we're using a hash map because we have a key value pair. And in case you forgot, a hash map is a dictionary in Python. And in case you forgot again, it's an ordered dictionary in Python now as of 3.7 plus. And we're now in like Python 3.9, so it's not a cutting edge feature. Put we'll put a key and a value pair in to the dictionary and I'll update it the key if the key exists. Otherwise, we'll add the key value pair to the cache. If the number of keys exceeds the capacity from this operation, we're going to evict the least recently used key. Um, the more common term now for evict is we're just going to remove it. And lastly, the functions get and put must each run an O of one average time complexity. And this is huge to the crux of 
is it cheating to use an ordered dictionary in Python? Because that O of 1 connotation which takes a problem that would otherwise use an array easily in any language and turns it into one that needs a doubly linked list. Once again, if that runtime is your focus, then the interviewer, or if you are the interviewer, will probably ask, can you do this doubly linked list for me on the side? And you should be able to. Now, moving on to the examples, we have example one, and this is actually a pretty complicated format to try to read. Um, what it's saying is it's creating this cache and we're putting one with a key of one with a value of one, um, two gets a key of two with a value of two and so on and so forth. Um, just the way this problem works in Leak Code, if you're confused about this, it's, it's just putting keys and values as the same pair here. Um, and that's just for the sake of the data structure, not so much how a cache actually works. We have our constraints down here, which is just about how the problem will be tested, nothing to worry about. Um, and the overall gist of the problem is just that we need to know how to manipulate a hash map, a getter, a setter, and some data structures there. And overall, this doesn't look too bad. We have an init method for ourselves, and we have a git and a put. Note that if you are in an interview, the interviewer may not give you this scaffold, so make sure you know how to declare a cache in your language of choice, us being Python. You know how to declare an initializer. Don't forget the double underscores in Python. And know that a getter and a putter are very common structures in coding. So with all of this talk of dictionaries that I've been doing, it should make sense that we're going to initialize a dictionary and the first thing we're doing. Thus, we're going to write self.dict equals a empty dictionary. And we're also gonna keep track of a capacity because we see here in the first bullet point that we are initializing a cache with a specific max capacity size that has to be positive. So self.capacity is equal to capacity. If you want, you could have a check here where if capacity is not greater than zero, we reject it anyway. But I think the constraints of this problem here say that a capacity given in will be greater than or equal to one always. So we don't actually have to worry about that. This is a decent lesson on make sure you read the constraints of the problem. And if the interviewer cares about you handling an edge case, handle it. Otherwise, you'd be wasting time in the interview handling this. So going back up, we have our two fields initialized in our init that we want. And then we can start considering how do we get and put with the dictionary. All right, now writing get method might sound a little bit less intimidating, especially if you're nervous in an interview. We do need something inside our dictionary first, so we should probably start with the method that places something inside our empty dictionary. Naturally, most people would write the line that sets it. So we'll say that self.dictionaries key is equal to the value that we're given. And let's think about edge cases. Well, first we know that if the dictionary is full, then we're gonna have to process something there. And we know if the key is already in the dictionary, then we want to update the value of the key if the key exists. So what that means to me is that we're going to update it regardless, but to update it, we're gonna to need to remove it and then rerun this update line. So let's handle that first. So we can say that if the key already exists in self.dictionary, then we are going to have to remove it so that line 13 currently can run. So that looks like self.dict.pop key which is just a super nice way of popping off the last thing. Now that we have that handled, um, updating the value of the key if the key exists, let's break down the longer thing. Um, otherwise, we will add the key value pair to the cache, already done that. But if the number of keys exceeds the capacity from this operation, then we need to remove the least recently used key. Two things there. We need to first check if the capacity gets exceeded by this, if we have to add a new one. And the other thing this means is we have to figure out what is the least recently used key. Well, because the dictionary is now ordered, the least recently used key should be at the very front of the dictionary. So let's start by writing that condition. So if the key is not already in the dictionary, then we're going to check if the dictionary is at max capacity. So if the length or the size essentially of the dictionary is at max capacity, which we've set here on line five. So if this condition is met, we have to remove the least recently used key. And we're gonna do that by using del. And del is a thing that you can actually use in Python to delete. You don't have to necessarily pop all the time, especially because we just want to remove it without actually getting it back right now. So we're going to use delete on our dictionary. And we're going to do a trick here. We know that we have to access a key in the dictionary, but the key that we want to access is the first thing in the dictionary because that's going to be our least recently used based off the data structure that we're using. 
the last thing in the dictionary, which gets popped off, is the most recent. So we don't want to use pop because that would give us the most recent thing that we're kicking out. So instead, to get to the first thing in a dictionary, and especially in an ordered dictionary, and an efficient runtime, we can actually create an iter of the object. And iter means we're creating something that is iterable. So our dictionary is iterable. So we're going to access the dictionary as an iterator. And our dictionary, being an iterable object, is getting its iterator called. And we can manipulate this iterator directly with commands. And generally, you can do next and previous on an iterator in any language. So we're going to call next on our iterator. And what that does is it begins our iterator and then goes to the first thing that it will see, in this case, which is the first element in this ordered dictionary, which is our least recently used object. Now, I know you might be thinking, Brian, what's happening with line 15? This is such a hack. How would I have known this in an interview? Well, that's why you're watching this video, right? You want to learn these tips and tricks. And this is something that is not just valid in Python and most languages with an iterator, but it's also something that is pretty impressive to show off to an interviewer. And it's not the most insane hack in the world. We're not like shifting bits and doing weird modular arithmetic. We're just relying on the fact that a dictionary is an iterable object and we can call an iterator on any iterable object. And we can use that to navigate the object as we need. And now with this knowledge in hand, Say you didn't know about this before, you now have the ability to answer questions about iterables, iterators, and creating them and advancing in them. So you've just learned something from this video. Now moving on, because it looks like we've answered everything about the put question, well, let's first handle the case that we have an empty dictionary and nothing exists. So if the key is not in our dictionary, then we are going to return negative one. And that is because it asks us to return negative one. So we have something convenient there to handle. So that's a given case. When you see something that says like return x value, you know that you have a line basically written for you. You just have to translate it into the syntax. Our thinking happens though when we have to return the value of the key if the key exists. Because this is a cache based on least recent and most recent use, we can't just return it from the dictionary. We need to make sure that when we grab something, we also update its position in the cache saying that, hey, I just got this thing and it's now the most recently used thing. And to make it the most recently used thing, we actually can just remove it and place it back on again. Because when we do that act of placing it back on our stack, it's now at the end and it's the most recently used object. So let's do that. So we have our value, which we're gonna get by popping the key from our dictionary. If we just simply access the key, we would get the value, but we wouldn't be updating it. So make sure that you include that pop. Likewise, now we will add it back to the dictionary at the end because otherwise, we would have just removed it. So now we can return value and we can take a look at this and know that, okay, we've popped, we've updated, and now we're returning our value for a getter and all looks good. And don't forget to explain this to your interview as you're going through, don't just have a silent interview with them. Because since we're not doing anything super complex with the doubly linked list with this hash map, your communication skills are what's gonna shine here. And all of your explanations as to how efficient this is are gonna be what the interviewer needs to hear. Thus, with all of our conditions met on these three bullet points, why don't we try running the code? All right, I've submitted it, it is pending. And bam, we have a pretty efficient solution in runtime and memory usage. Um, it does its accessing in O of 1 as required by the problem statement, and it's accepted and it's a valid solution. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn with me and discuss with me these nuances of should you be using Python 3's built-in tricks like this on a problem? And if you do, how do you explain it well such that the interviewer doesn't think that you're taking the easy way out, but instead you know your stuff about Python? All right, now that we've finished the problem, I hope this video was helpful to you, and thank you so much for watching. Please give a like if it was helpful and helped you out. And I believe that all this content should be free and not behind some course or a paywall like some other channels. Uh, my goal is to grow this channel providing free content for aspiring engineers to use in pursuing their dream careers. And if you do believe in this mission with me too, please consider dropping a subscribe. It will definitely help my channel grow and keep me motivated to keep producing more content. With that said, thank you so much and have a good one.